This is Plus Politics. Now the battle for the governorship ticket of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in the forthcoming election in Edo State has begun with two main contenders, the incumbent Godwin Obasaki and Osage Izeyamu. The governor of Edo State, Governor Godwin Obasaki, visited President Mahmoud Buhari to present his form seeking re-election on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, APC, as stated that the president assured him of his support. Izeyamu also recently emerged the consensus aspirant of the All Progressives Congress faction loyal to the national chairman of the party, Adam Sushomale. And now we'll wait the primaries. And joining us to discuss this is Reverend Olu Martins, a civil society spokesperson, and Barrister Stanley Imahoro, an illegal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the show tonight. For having me. Good evening. Good evening, Reverend Olu Martins. And how are you doing tonight? I'm awesome. All right. Now, let me start with you. Now, what is your thought on Ize Yamu emerging as a consensus aspirant of the All Progressives Congress in a direct primary? Well, I, I, I respect uh, uh, Pastor Osage Ize Yamu. He's been a long friend and mentor of mine. Just to say, to update you perhaps, is that um, the consensus candidature of uh, Pastor Sage Ezeamu is no longer in the offing anymore. Uh, as we speak now, we have at least um, five or so other aspirants who, who he, he had um, uh, congratulated him for emerging as the consensus candidate of their own, so to speak, faction. But in case you do not know, Pius Odubu, former deputy governor who was angling initially before the issue of consensus candidate has bought tickets. Uh, engineer Chris Ogenwoye has bought tickets. Uh, and Osaro Obaze, uh, former Uredo chairman, has bought tickets, plus Pastor Sage Izeyamu. So uh, Pastor Sage Izeyamu is no longer the consensus candidate. Uh, just day before yesterday, he was. But as of today, you know how politicians are now. Maybe uh, some people just feel that, why should I throw my towel into the ring? Let's everybody go in there and then angle for the um, ticket of the party. But as it stands now, um, on their own side, there are four. On the um, Gordon Obas Obasaki side, the governor himself has purchased a ticket. There is a Matthew Ijoi Kenwen, who who is also a chieftain of the APC, who has also purchased tickets. So there are six people currently on the race, four on the side of uh, what is now popularly known as the EPM, and then uh, uh, of, uh, the governor and matriculate. So, they are, uh, so it's no longer the consensus candidate. That's just the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> Now, report has it that Governor Basaki has rejected the direct primary for the coming governorship election in Edo State. Is this true? Absolutely. 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 Now, if, if true, he, he oh, yes, if this is true, yes. Reverend Martins, Oshomele said the APC had not received any official letter from the governor rejecting the direct mode of primary adopted by the party's National Working Committee, that's the NWC. I need your reactions to this, please. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, truth of, the truth of the matter is that um, I do not know how the All Progressive Congress um, do their official communications. I'm not a member of their political party. I am just want, we are just advocates of good governance, we are advocates of um, democracy, we are advocates of transparency, we are advocates of accountability. And so whether he has received that communication or not is how politicians talk. I, I don't like to get into, you know, how they talk. But I, I imagine that what, if you go by what the deputy governor has said, the deputy governor did say, and I quote him, that the reason why they do not subscribe to a direct primary is because, first of all, it's going to be chaotic. And you know, there's, there is a nexus between confusion and chaos. In the midst of confusion, you would always find chaos. And then people have uh, prognosticated that you're going to be conducting elections in 192 wards of the state. Apart from the challenge of the COVID-19 that is there, 
We're also looking at a chaotic situation, a contestation, you know, among the um, candidates. And, where, and they are not sure that if the results have not yet been prepared. Because we have 192 words. They prefer a delegate situation where you have everybody perhaps in the um, stadium that we have here. And then all eyes are looking at the activities that are happening. They are against wanting to do it in 192 words, uh, which people, which I also subscribe to the fact that knowing how we conduct our elections in this place, there's going to be a lot of chaos, especially knowing that if you win, the if that the person who would emerge as the candidate of the APC say winner take all things. So it's just natural for people to be suspicious, especially given the background that the umpire, the people that the umpire in this particular election, at least the man that would draft people who would um, um, serve as umpire in this election, is also an interested party. Right, I'm sure let, let me interject there. Uh, Martins, Martins, let me interject you uh, there. And let me go to um, Barrister Stanley. Now, Barrister Stanley, Report has it that Governor Godwin Obasaki has rejected direct primary for the coming governorship election in Edo State. I need your reaction to this. Is this true? Well, I think uh, from what the governor said uh, yesterday and even uh, the day before yesterday, he said he's ready for either direct or indirect primary. And that whichever one uh, the party has uh, decided upon, he is sure that he will win. So. Ordinarily, we take it that the, uh, the governor is ready for the direct primary that the NWC of the party has recommended for the state. Uh, I'm surprised uh, that uh, today uh, some persons were in court, the Federal High Court being on behalf of the governor, trying to compare the APC to adopt indirect primaries in conducting their primaries. I do not seem to understand the position of the governor because he appears, with due respect to him, to be speaking from both sides of his mouth. If you say you are ready for direct or indirect primary, what is the essence of rushing to court to seek injustice relief, compelling the party to compare, to conduct Indirect primaries. Okay, but the what's your reaction? Uh, yes, uh, Minister Stanley, what is your reaction to um, Ize Yamo being, being adopted as a consensus candidate uh, of the APC through the direct primary? What's your reaction to that? Yeah, my reaction is that uh, in so far as uh, contestants uh, decided to come together to present a common front and say is in line with the constitution of the APC, of course, nothing validates that position. Nobody has said that having been adopted as a consensus candidate of some section of the party, is automatically the candidate of the party. Primary is created for 22nd of June. So whoever will contest that primary with him, then the, 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 the outcome will decide who the eventual uh, candidate is. So politics, in politics allow for people to associate, negotiate, and reach some uh, common understanding. So it's a fantastic development, if you ask me. All right, Reverend, Reverend Olu Martins, it, it's palpable the ongoing feud between the APC national chairman, Adam Zoshomile, and the incumbent, Godwin um, Obasaki. Do you think there's an end in sight to the feud between these two people? Well, politics is always about the crisis, contestations, and the consensus. I am aware that the governors on the platform of the All Progressive Congress had had a jaw jaw, if you like to speak, with the very reputable Jagaban of Nigerian politics that was in Swati Nikoi. Also aware that um, it, it, the governors have also gone to have the same party with the national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Adam Sashomole. I'm also aware that they have moved their party to the with the president and by extension the supreme leader of the party, if you allow me to put it that way. So clearly is that I'm sure that there will be a meeting point. Like we say, after John uh, we have a connection problem there with uh, Martins. Let me come to you, uh, Bryson Stanley. Bryson Stanley. 
Uh, yes. Gordon Obasaki on Monday visited President Mahmoud Buhari to present his form seeking re-election uh, on the platform of, of the APC and did say that Buhari gave him his word, his support. How do you see this panning out in, in the forthcoming election? Uh, if, you know the, if you know Mr. President very well, you will know that it's very accommodating to people who are contesting the election under the platform of the party. So there was nothing special about uh, presentation of form or giving assurance. The responsibility of uh, the president as a party man is to assure our aspirants that, look, we will provide the necessary environment to ensure free and fair primaries. That was merely what the president uh, said. So you do not expect the president to say, I'm adopting you or I'm against you. The president, I'm sure, will equally be willing to uh, receive uh, other aspirants if they so uh, make such move. Now, Mr. Sally, finally, quickly, if you will, in just in just a few seconds, in the light of all of this, all of this happening, do you think the the people of Edo State are guaranteed a free, fair, and credible election? In the light of everything happening, of course, the gladiators just now who are seeking to be the flag bearer of uh, the APC, they are not to determine whether the election will be. Uh, uh, free or, or, or fair. INEC has responsibility to ensure that the process is uh, free and fair. And we expect the federal government and the state government to indeed uh, come together and put the necessary infrastructure in place to ensure that we have a free and fair election. The people will decide. What you see now is just mere drama. The people will eventually decide when, uh, by, by September this year. But, I, I, I'm very sure we have a uh, free, fair, and credible elections. All right. By Sir Stanley Manro, legal practitioner, thank you for joining us and for your contribution. And also to you, Reverend Olu Martin, spokesperson, Civil Group Society. Thank you very much for your time on the show tonight. Thank you for having me. That's all we can have on the conversation tonight. I'll give you my take shortly. Stay with us. Here is my take. Although Nigeria's caseload still lags behind several other countries, our large population and relatively high degree of mobility and urbanization, 50%, places us at an increased risk for high transmittability. Now, therefore, the consideration of case and lifting of ban of restrictions has to balance lives and livelihoods, and this should be science and data-driven and devoid of any sentiment. In spite of the modest process made, in my opinion, I think Nigeria is still not ready for a full reopening of its economy and religious institutions. The evident and inevitable conclusion now is that the fight against COVID-19 might be long term as the virus is not likely to go away very soon. This also can be further underscored by the fact that no vaccine is expected to around the end of 2021. There is also the imperative for the government to refocus its policy and community ownership, intensify the mobilization of individuals, especially the communities, to take ownership of this fight. Nigeria is not where it should be in terms of control, ownership and infrastructure and change of behavior. We must do more. And that's all on Plus Politics tonight. Join us again tomorrow. News on the hour, up next shortly. In the meantime, stay well and be safe.